This is the Springbrook Clockwise All The Way Down segment. I currently hold the fifth fastest time for this, and but that was back in 2013, when the trail was running faster than it is today. It's changed a bit over the years and it's pretty much impossible to get those times now. But on this run down tonight, I was able to get my fastest time of 2018 and the 10th fastest time of the year on Strava. So it wasn't bad. Now, I wouldn't usually film this at night, and I'd say it's probably a fairly boring video, but for the fact that I had the camera on the down tube of my bike as I was using it earlier in the evening to try to tune the characteristics of my suspension and to monitor what was going on. I currently have a push ACS free spring um, that replaced the Talis on my Fox 36. But I've been finding that this doesn't work very well with the Fit 4 damper that I currently have in the fork. So I've been playing around with settings to try to see if I can improve it. It was kind of interesting running this descent, seeing what the fork does. My current settings are with the low speed compression fully open. That's why you're seeing the fork bob around as I'm pedaling. Um, I really don't have any damp in there at the moment, but the feel, fork does feel incredibly plush on these kind of like slow speed inputs and it's still very supportive and I think this is due to the spring in the mid travel of the fork. It's not like I need the low speed compression to stop the fork from blowing through its travel. It's really there to control perhaps the inputs uh, from my pedaling input. And I don't notice that on the bike, so I kind of just leave it as it is. I might play around with low speed compression a bit more to see if I can reduce this bobbing up and down, because it does look like a pogo in the video, but you don't notice it. It's kind of interesting. For the rebound, with the low speed fully open, I went through settings on a rough section of Dowdy, uh, from fully closed to fully opened, and in the end I settled on on that testing eight clicks out from closed. So this descent is on eight clicks out from closed. After doing the descent, I decided it still wasn't quite right. So I did back it off to seven clicks, but it's interesting how it works. The high speed doesn't appear to be affected. There's no high speed compression or high speed rebound control on the fit fork. And I think this is one of the issues I have with my fork at the moment. It's not horrible, but it's not great either. At the moment, the fork is pretty decent for the most part, but it could be better. Now, I'm now considering, you know, replacing the entire damper assembly with a grip two to give me both high and low speed compression and rebound damping control. And I think that will allow me to get the fork the best that I can out of it. Uh, why not change to a new 2018 or 2019 fork? Well, I really don't want to mess with air springs. Um, here in Colorado, you know, we can go from 5,000 feet up to 10, 11,000 feet. You've got air pressure changes, which means that changes the spring characteristics of your fork. You've got temperature changes. You know, you I can, I can be starting a ride at 32 degrees in the morning and it can climb up to 70, 80 degrees in the evening. So you've got air pressure changes temperature changes all affecting the characteristics of an air sprung fork. I like the idea that I've got a spring that's once set is going to be consistent and the same no matter the altitude or temperature that I'm running in. So for now the spring actually feels great. It's the damping on my fork that doesn't quite work with the spring and that I need to change. We're now on Dowdy Draw, descending down from the intersection with the Springbrook Loop. And this is the section that has slowed up over the years. It's just undergone more rework because users were trail braiding the trail, cutting corner, and ironically, the cutting of the corner actually slowed the trail down. Previously, there was a nice bermed banked corner that you could rail around and actually get an immense amount of speed off, continuing the descent from there. Now that was cut out, it's all been flattened out, it became a total mess and this particular section here has just all been smoothed over. It's actually slower than what it was before. It's one of those things where people trying to get the fastest time, cut corners, actually slow off the trail because they don't know what they're doing. It's kind of ironic really. Anyway, that's the descent and these are my musings on fork travel and suspension. Leave your comments below, let me know what you think of suspension tuning and uh, thank you for watching.